Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I had introduced my model of the Ariane 6 rocket, which is now part of my real rockets pack. And the textures aren't quite exactly the official textures of the Ariane 6 rocket, but I sort of like this version better. Uh, the official one is just flat white with blue stripes. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. In the course of researching the Ariane 6 rocket while making this, I encountered an alternative situation for an upgrade, basically. They are developing a new engine called the Prometheus engine that's going methane and oxygen burning. And so they had a nice little website on it, on the, on the ESA website, they had a page on it. And they had a good image of it. And so I was able to model it based on the image that they had on the website. And the textures they had on the model were rather, uh, it was just a really shiny black, basically. Uh, and it indicated that it was a very preliminary model, but um, hey, it was a good looking model. So I decided to copy it with, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than this, of course. I simplified it, but it's basically the essence of what they had there, subject to change. Now, the thing about this methane oxygen engine is that it is 1000 kilonewton and it is meant to basically be placed on the bottom of this. So they'll need to change up the tanks, but probably not the diameter or the or the height. Well, the height might. But anyway, I decided to go ahead and make a methane oxygen version of the Ariane tank. So exactly the same thing, same volume, but filled with methane and oxygen. So same dry mass, but the wet mass is improved uh, because it's containing more propellant. Now in this case, the sort of silverish portions here don't make a lot of sense because this would be the oxygen tank and this would be the hydrogen tank. And of course the hydrogen tank is much more voluminous. In the case of a methane oxygen system, the methane tank will only be a little bit less uh, long than the oxygen tank. But anyway, we'll ignore that for now. I'll develop this further later on. My goal in this video is to test what the Prometheus engine can do, given uh, the way they had it on the website, which was in a pack of seven. Now we're going to test it without boosters, because um, from what I've seen, from their documentation, they didn't intend to use this with boosters. So it's the Prometheus engine, and we're gonna put seven of them on. And uh, they're aiming for multiple restarts with the Prometheus engine, so they're probably trying to be all space sexy or more, more. It's more like a mini New Glenn, right? New Glenn is seven methane oxygen engines. But in that case, those engines are more than twice the thrust of these. So this is a less capable rocket. So I think they'll ultimately make this longer, but there's no indication of how big it's going to be. That keeping at the same diameter at least simplifies the tooling situation. So, and so I fully expect them to keep the same diameter. And yeah. I think we cannot carry this much payload. It's a much lighter rocket than the Ariane 6, incidentally. Let me take a look at the mass of the Ariane 6 briefly. It says 530 to 860 tons, and that's depending on whether it's carrying two boosters or three boosters. The core tank is much lighter in the case of carrying all the hydrogen. It's only like 150 tons or 130 to 150 tons, something like that. Uh, so this is much heavier, but, well, anyway, the boosters. <laughs> okay, so it is a lighter rocket, but we can't carry as much payload as a result. Of course, uh, the fact that we're not using hydrogen and oxygen anymore also means that we can't carry as much payload. It's not as efficient, though the boosters are a whole other thing. There's, it's still a Hydrolox upper stage. So my guess is everybody wants to try and recover things. So probably grid fins and landing legs or whatever the usual business, or maybe, uh, maybe they'll go for helicopter catch, who knows something. 
I've made the engine block separate so that we could finagle a helicopter. Well, you know, we could separate this off and have a heat shield on it. Actually, it probably wouldn't need heat shields. Well, it might be going fast enough, yeah. It might need heat shield considering how much delta V it's putting out there. So it's a separate sort of little module so we can still have some parachutes and heat shield and all that business. But that's for later. I want to see what kind of payload it gets up first. I'm not changing up the fairings, obviously. And our thrust weight ratio, you know, that's a healthy thrust weight ratio, but as far as making a longer core tank, I don't think it's going to get too much larger than this. So, okay, um, let's try 17.5 uh, first. 17.5 ton payload. So the official rated, and this is still tight on the delta V, but we've got a pretty good thrust weight ratio. The engines do throttle as far as I have them. I don't know if the real Prometheus ones do, but I suspect they will. Um, I'll link the page in the video description where I got the look of the model and the details as such are in flux, but according to Wiki, <laughs> I hate saying that, but according to Wiki, gas generator cycle have a thrust of 100 tons and a combustion chamber pressure of 100 bars, which means it's basically the same as my ED4 engine. And the, unfortunately, there's a lot of citation needed on the Wiki page for the Prometheus engine, but um, those numbers make sense to me because they're the same as for the ED4 engine, but also they would fit this size rocket about right. I would expect that kind of thrust. I would expect that kind of chamber pressure because they already have that kind of chamber pressure from the Vulcane engine, which is also gas generator. So yeah, I would think that that would be fair. Uh, and so yeah, I've given it the ISP appropriate for 100 bars of combustion chamber pressure and we've got 1,000 kilonewtons coming out of them. All right, so, but again, they're testing it next year. They're testing a prototype or demo next year. And I don't think they're testing the final version of the engine. So there's a lot of development to do. This is like maybe Ariane 7. Let's just call it Ariane 7. Ariane 7. Okay, so potential Ariane 7. And still opportunity for boosters, but we'll see. Their goal with the Prometheus engine is to make it cheap and presumably to recover it, but I'm not sure. It is a reusable engine, that's the goal. They say on the webpage, and I quote, SM moves ahead on low cost reusable rocket engine. So. We are, of course, launching from Kuru. And throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Then we have plumes. Good. Launch. And it is vigorous with these seven engines. But we have to keep in mind the long burn time of the upper stage as well. It's nice to have a vigorous core stage like this. Vulcan could learn a few things. People talk about Vulcan Heavy. I don't think they've worked out the reality of that. I tried to put one together. It's not good. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll do a video on that. It's rather depressing though. Because the Vulcan core isn't very powerful. Remember, New Glenn has seven of those BE-4 engines. New Glenn has, I mean, uh, Vulcan has two. It really, really needs boosters in order to do stuff. And boosters that aren't other Vulcan cores, I mean. I mean, the SRBs. Now uh, we can throttle down. I gave them throttling down to 40%. Okay, staging and ignition of the second stage. And nozzle out. 
and make sure those are both the fairings. Okay, fairing set. Okay. But, well, I forget if Vinci throttles. I don't think so. No. No, it doesn't. Uh, the joys of Hydrolox upper stages. I don't think it's going to quite make it. Maybe with a lighter fairing, a smaller fairing, it'd be better. As far as the ISPs on the Prometheus engine, I doubt the real one is going to have any better. Uh, I've given it 300 at sea level and 343 in vacuum, basically the same as my ED4 engine. And it's lighter than the ED4 engine because that seems reasonable given its apparent size. Yeah, uh, that's not good enough. All right. So, a lighter payload, it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and try 16 tons and see. Uh, yep, let's go for that. These aren't light fairings. I think each one is 2 tons. Yeah. Yeah, 2 tons. Okay, let's try this again. Throttle up. SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Still very vigorous, but is that thrust weight ratio really helping us out enough? Okay, I'm gonna wanna leave a little bit more time to Apoasis, but I don't wanna go too far. Now, of course, this is not recoverable mode payload capacity, because we don't know the method of recovery yet. And fairings. Okay, and throttle though that doesn't matter. Probably pitch. Okay. We're getting to orbit here, hopefully. It's close. Okay, that'll do uh, 350 by 247 with 36 meters per second left. Sure, we could use the hydrazine to complete orbit or something, but I think I think I'm satisfied that 16 tons is it for this configuration. 16 tons on a 400 ton rocket is not bad. That's 4%. And from Methylox and the Hydrolox upper stage, though. Hydrolox, in general, tends to get 5% or so. So, yeah. But, anyway. Uh, well... Is it Ariane 7? Well, they're working on the engine. That's all I'll say, the Prometheus engine. And we'll see what they make of it. It's another methane-oxygen engine to throw into the mix. It's basically the same as my ED4, so it's nice to have one that's real, basically. And it's gonna have practically the same stats, one way or another, because they have the same chamber pressure and they want the same thrust out of it. So, yeah, anyway, we'll see. I might make a more formalized version of the first stage tank that uh, it might be a little bit longer because it doesn't seem like we're getting enough delta V out of the first stage. Maybe we will be more optimized with a little bit more delta V from that stage. And, you know, our thrust weight ratio is more than 1.5 off at sea level right now. If we make the first stage longer, it's easier to add more of those stages as boosters. So if it's as short as it is right now, if we add them as boosters, the thrust weight ratio off the pad is going to be crazy. So that's the problem. Anyway, so with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.